Hi guys, this is Pre Algebra Lesson 8-1, Populations and Samples. In this lesson, we'll be able to determine if a sample is representative of a population. Um, let's start with solve and discuss it. The table shows the lunch items sold on one day at the middle school cafeteria. It's just one day. Use the given information to help the cafeteria manager complete his full supply order for next week. So he's just looking at the data for one day. Um, that could be our sample representation um, to see how many people prefer each item. So the lunch items are the following in the graph. Turkey sandwich, hot dog, veggie burger, and fish taco. The numbers sold are represented in the graph. So what conclusions can you draw from the lunch data? So how many, how many uh, should he um, prepare for, for each item? So looking at the ingredients, he needs to buy them and prepare them. So if, if a turkey sandwich is more popular than anything else, then he wants to prepare enough turkey sandwiches. Um, if, of course, everyone may not make it make the same choice. However, we're using this one day data to uh, see their preferences. Okay, so using this representative data, what kind of conclusions can we make? For turkey sandwich, about how many percent is it out of the total? So we want to figure that out, right? So turkey sandwich. That's going to be 43 out of the total of 135 numbers sold here. So 43 out of 135 is about turkey sandwich, about 32% of lunch items sold. Hot dog, 50, 51 divided by 135 is about... Uh, 38 percentage, okay, about 38 percentage. And veggie burger, in the same way, 14 divided by 138, 135 is about 10 percent of, about 10 percent uh, of, of the lunch items sold. And finally, fish taco. 27 divided by 135 would be about 20% of lunch items sold, okay? So looking at that, which is the most popular? The hot dog, and then turkey sandwich, and then, uh, and then fish taco, and then veggie burger, right? So what can we conclude? How should he um, prepare for next week? We can say that for next week, um, wait, let me just erase the screen. We can say that for next week, 32% of the lunch order should be turkey sandwiches, 38% should be hot dogs, and 10% should be veggie burgers, and 20% should be fish tacos. So we can, so like this, we can just pull out a sample data and to help, uh, help estimate for and make predictions for the future so that we could better prepare for the future. Because there is a trend going on. There is a pattern. Some people just get the same thing every day. And so um, you want to figure out the pattern. All right, focus on math practices. Why might it be helpful for the cafeteria manager to look at the items order on more than one day? This is just for a day. Why is it helpful for him to look at it, look at the data for more than one day? Because the more days he, he looks at, um, the more patterns he sees each day, right? If he looks at more than one day, he can see if students tend to order the same items on each day or if their preferences vary. So he would get more information about uh, is, it, is it solid, the hot dog is the most popular, or 
do they switch back and forth between turkey sandwich and hot dog? Right? So, yeah, so that's how we're going to deal with data and um, make inferences. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so the essential question is how can you determine a representative sample, sample of a population? Let's look at example one. We're going to understand populations and samples. Okay, so in this example, we have 2,468 registered voters in Morganstown. And they're voting on whether to build a new stadium. Morgan and her friends really want the town to vote in favor of the new stadium. How can they determine how the voters will vote before the day of the vote? How can you represent the problem situation? Right? So Morgan and her friends could ask every registered, registered voter or the entire population of voters in town how they plan to vote. But is that practical? Not really. However, surveying 2,468 people takes a long time. That might take forever. And they might not be able to survey the, the entire population before the, the, the voting ends, right? So Morgan and her friends may not be able to survey the entire population of voters. So what, what do they do? Morgan and her friends could ask a subset so subset is part of a set, a bigger set, or, or sample of the registered voters in town, how they plan to vote. But how do they, how do they determine what samples, right? Serving a sample of voters does not take as long and is more reasonable to do, and um, they decide to take samples. Morgan and her friends would be able to ask 100 or 200 people, randomly, supposedly. So we want to see a good representative sample of a population in this case. We don't just want to ask a, an elementary kids, right? Because <laughs> they, they might not even vote, right? So we want to ask random people from the population so that it is a good representation of the whole population when you're making inferences about the data. So that's very important. So let's, uh, let's see the try it question. Miguel thinks the science teachers in the school give more homework than the math teacher. Ooh, he is researching the number of hours middle school students in his school spend doing math and science homework each night. Okay, so the blank includes all of the students in Miguel's middle school. What vocabulary best fits here? Is it, we have two vocabulary so far, population and sample. Is it the population or is it the sample? Remember the key word here is all of the students, Miguel's middle school. The population. And a possible blank is some students from each of the grades in the middle school. A possible sample some students from each of the grades. So he's trying to randomize and make a good representation sample. So let's look at convince me. Why is it more efficient to study a sample rather than an entire population? Why do we do this? Why can't we just uh, survey the whole population? Do you, would you want to survey the whole population? Not really, it's not smart. Why? Many populations are so large, it could take too long to survey everyone. It also may be too expensive, right? You might have to drive all the way from one end to the other end of wherever your population is spread out in. And so that, that takes a lot of time and effort. Um, think about all the gas fees. That's, that's too much. So you don't want to do that. That's why we, we, sam we get a sample. All right, let's look at the next page. Example two, describe a representative sample. Morgan decides to survey a sample of the town's voting population. So we're continuing with example one. How can she know that the survey results from the sample of voters represent the pos position of the entire town's population? 
So now we have a new vocabulary. A representative sample accurately reflects the characteristics of the entire population. In a random sample, each member of the population has an equal chance of being included. That's very important, equal chance. Okay. A random sample tends to be a representative sample because they're randomized and you're not the ones who are choosing the sample and people just get there. Morgan can survey a random sample or a randomly selected group of voters to make sure her results represent the position of the entire town. Let's look at the try question. A produce manager is deciding whether there is a customer demand for expanding the organic food sections of her store. How could she obtain the information she needs? So a produce manager um, is curious. Would there be anyone who would want them to expand their organic food section? Or would people prefer not to? Right? How how could they how could she obtain some uh, some information by taking us a, a, a survey from random samples, which will be a, hopefully a good representative sample. So she could survey randomly selected shoppers to form a representative sample. Just select maybe like every other people who just walks in and just uh, ask for ask for a uh, survey. All right, example three, generate a random sample. How can Morgan generate a random sample of the town's voting population? So they decided on the random uh, random sample, but how like how would they vote? She's going to follow these steps. First, define the population. The population consists of the registered voters in town. And then step two, choose the sample size. Morgan plans to survey 100 registered voters out of the 2,000, so and so. And then step three, make or, or card a list of all members of the population. And then step four, assign a number to each member of the population. Why do we do that? Step five, generate a list of random numbers to select sample numbers in order to select sample members randomly. You assign a number to all the members of the population and then just select a random number. That way, it could be very randomized. All right, let's look at try, the, uh, try number three. Ravi is running against two other candidates for student council president. All of the 750 students in Ravi School will vote for student council president. Well, we don't know who, but they will vote. How can Ravi generate a representative sample that will help him determine whether he will win the election? So he wants to, he wants to know if he'll win the election or not. So he wants to take a sample. Um, how, can you, how can he do that? You follow the steps from example three. He's going to define the population, which is 750 students. Choose the sample size. Maybe he can, uh, maybe he can ask 50 students or 100 students. But you know, uh, it needs to be, it needs to be practical. Like he can't survey all 750 students. Maybe that's too much. Um, and then make or require a list of all members in the population. Um, he needs uh, he needs all students' names. He needs to know everyone, I guess, on the list. Um, make a unique assign unique numbers for each of them, and then generate a list of random numbers. And he's going to select them to get a sample of um, of the vote. So following the steps. He can assign each student a school and number and randomly select numbers until he reaches the desired sample size. Okay. Let's look at the next page. Example four. Generate multiple random samples. Morgan and Maddie will each generate a random sample of the 138 students in seventh grade at their school. 
they each write the numbers from 1 to 138 on small pieces of paper and put them in different hats. Then they draw 20 numbers randomly from their hats. What do you notice about the two random samples taken from the sam same population? What does this tell you about the sampling technique? So Morgan's sample has two numbers selected, 38 and 106. Matt's sample also has 38 and 106 selected. And both of them have uh, 20 members in each sample, right? 20 members. They, they've drawn 20, 20 numbers. The only numbers common to both samples are 38 and 106, right? Out of the 20. So the numbers are distributed differently in each sample, which means it is pretty randomized, right? So they don't want to, um, yeah, they can, they can make sure that maybe like they want to put these numbers back into the hat and maybe pick other numbers just to make sure they're choosing uh, other numbers if they want to. So uh, the sampling method procedures random uh, samples that have mostly different members, but that are each likely to be representative of the population. So as long as you have random sample, it should be a good representation of the population. Oh, so you gotta try it. The table at the right shows a random sample that Jeremy generated from the same population as Morgan's and Mattis samples. Compare Jeremy's sample to Morgan's and Maddie's. Do you see the circled numbers, 36 and 126? You see 36, uh, do you see 36 somewhere? Yeah, 36 is right here. And so that's why it's circled, 36 and 126 is from Mattis sample. So other than those two numbers, other numbers are not from any other samples. So what can you tell? He also randomly chose it. So it's a good representation of a random sample. Okay, so and how many samples uh, does he have? Also 20. And so out of 20, only two of them were already chosen from others. So that's, so that's, pretty, that's pretty good uh, as a random sample. So let's, so let's look at um, a sample answer. Jeremy's sample also has 20 members. The number 36 is also in Morgan's sample and the number 126 is also in Matt's sample. And there are no numbers common to all three students' samples. All right, let's sum up our lesson. So the key concept we learned today is a like a lot of vocabulary. So a population, again, is the entire group of objects, people, animals, plants, from where data can be collected. When you ask a statistical question about a population, it's often more efficient to gather data from a sample of the population. And the representative sample of a population has the same characteristics as a population. So generating a random sample is one reliable way to produce a representative sample of a population. There are other ways. So you can generate multiple random samples that are different, but that are each representative of the population. Okay, that was lesson one, um, populations and samples. We'll continue with lesson two in the next video.